Hello crafty friends, Amanda here with Crafting with Amanda and today is Craft IQ for April. So this was a mood board that Jackie gave us kind of as our first inspiration and then we needed to add silver, use stencils, hexagons, add sequins, punch, and vellum. And then as a bonus twist, create seven embellishment clusters. Well, vellum is packed somewhere in my garage and I'm not sure where it's at, but you got a sneak peek of my layout, how it all came together. We were at the beach visiting with our nephew and our son was in the water and we I saw something, I'm like, what's in the water? And before anybody could really look or answer, my husband was up and, and kind of headed to the beach to get our son to come in and it turned out that there was a whale that was breaching and blowholing and you know we didn't get a lot of photos we were just kind of watching it but our nephew did get some so I'm going to use this stencil as the sunburst from close to my heart so that's one of the layers and then I have the um, Sundance color that I pulled from some mix-in paper packs and this black paper is also from the mix-ins so that kind of gets us to the mood board with that warm sun colors as well as the sun stencil. So off camera I double matted my photos and then I on the Cricut I cut some hexagons as well as cut the whale and the hexagons were just from the general images on the Cricut and the whale came from the close to my heart cartridge you are here. So here I'm just going to cut one of the ends on this piece into a banner end and this is from the old Isabella papers. So I really like being able to go in and mix and match and use papers and that from older collections just to kind of use up what I have, but it coordinates so well with the current projects. So here what I'm doing is I'm making sure to start in the center of this stencil for the sunburst so that the darker color or the most, I can't think of the right word, um, intensity of the color is in the center and then it lightens as we kind of move down the rays and my stencil is kind of moving a little bit but again in this process of packing up my studio I have used up all of the painters tape that I had on hand so I need to go and find some of that and maybe I'll find my vellum at the same time so I've removed the stencils and I'm kind of just softening up the edges and making sure to start off of the paper so that it's a hazy kind of hazy sunny look and that's exactly what I'm going for here so now we have the stencil part of it so that's number three in and the mood board so we have one and three done and I cut the hexagons so just like with the stencil I'm taking my blending brush and inking the edges of all of the papers and as you can see I did cut out the center to save um, or conserve is probably a better word those cardstock papers and the other orange I wanted to use those for cutting the hexagons and also matting my photos so one piece of cardstock and I was able to do all of those things and here I'm kind of using the one photo that doesn't have any people on the beach to cover some of the people that are on the other side of the beach. I couldn't do that with all of them because of where the spout is from the whale and where the people are, but at least there's less distractions now. And if you haven't watched my channel to know this, I like to dry fit or audition embellishments and papers and kind of visually see where they are before I commit to them. And that's exactly what I'm doing here is just trying to figure out where these hexagons go, where the whale's gonna go, I realize that I don't have any journaling or a title, so I'm going to start, um, I typed up my journaling on the computer and I'll do some strips of that, but until we get to that point, I, I'll change my mind six times on how these hexagons are supposed to go. Because they're different sizes, they don't interlock exactly like um, they would ha had they been all the same size. But I kind of want to have some overlapping and then I realized that I think I need to ink the edges of them. It's about this point that I'm thinking about how the colors are, are working together or not working together and trying to figure out a plan and, and what it's missing, kind of what areas need some sprucing up. So instead of using the Sundance for the edges of the hexagon, as you can see, I'm using the Bluebell. Bluebird, excuse me. <laughs> Bluebell was the color of the year. Bluebird is a whole different color. 
And then here, just with white printer paper, I've cut strips with my journaling. And it basically talks about, like I said, is that we were on the beach at Will Rogers State Park and um, just kind of hanging out. Our youngest was in the water and I'm seeing something out there. And sure enough, it's a whale. So that became our title too. And I just um, cut that out with the thin cuts that I have from close to my heart. I just really like these. They're about an inch and a quarter tall and for me they're perfect for a nice bold title. And like I said, I'm very visual so I do fuss with things until I can get them placed just right. For me, the best way to get my title to make sure that it is on a straight path is I use my T ruler and I hold it down and actually bump the edge of the letter up against the ruler and that way I know that they're all on the same plane and the T ruler is against the side so it's all perpendicular to the edge and we're ready to go. Some of those visual things can really um, distract me from photos. So now I need to add silver and sequins and I'm doing those at the same time. So I went through my sequins pack and I pulled out just the smallest sequins as well as the smallest stars that are silver. And here I'm putting them along the edge of one of the hexagons and I must have had a little bit of glue on one of my fingers because the sequence is sticking to me and not to the glue on the page. And I'm just taking a look here trying to find some balance so I did the hexagon above the photo now I'm going to do it kind of on below the photo on the opposite edge. Again just finding that balance in the page. And I don't know, I use my piercing tool. I love this pickup tool from Close to My Heart. It's basically a, a wax crayon that you sharpen and as it gets gummed up, you can just kind of wipe off the gum or a layer of the wax and sure enough, it's back to brand new again. So here as part of the spout from the whale Cricut cut, I'm using the little tiny stars and I'm gonna make the spray just look that much tinier, so. That's exactly what I'm doing here is I'm taking the five of the little tiny stars and doing that. I'm always surprised at what just a few tiny embellishments or sparkles or even the shimmer brush, it really just changes the whole feel of a page in my opinion. And that could be good or bad. I've seen and I've done it where I've created a page and then I've added some embellishments or dots or sequins. and all of a sudden took the page in a whole different direction and I wasn't happy where it ended up. But in this case, I think there was just enough to really highlight and enhance what's going on here. Oh, also my punches, the only punches that I have access to are leaves and a daisy punch or a mum punch. So instead of the punch, I decided that the cricket whale was going to have to represent my punch. And here you can see kind of the close up, you can see that flume from the whale. I, I know that I didn't meet the criteria exactly, but I did what I could with what I had. Be sure to check out everybody else that's playing along with the Craft IQ this month. It's a fun little challenge, and they're all lifted, listed in the description under my video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you're welcome to do that now. Here's another video you may be interested in, and I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.